Hello everyone, welcome to the book pod. My name is Senna. Today I'm going to be starting a new series called Pages from the Pod. In this series, I want to break down books that I love that I think you should read too. These books may be books that have been out for a while but I don't think have gotten enough love from people or maybe there are new releases that I really want people to read. At the end of the day, I just want you guys to read these books. So in this first episode, I'm going to be talking about the book The Perfect Family Man by M.M. DeLuca. Um, I had never even heard of her before. Um, She's a new author for me. I just saw this at the thrift store a couple months ago, and it sounded really interesting by the synopsis on the back, so I decided to pick it up. I read it last month, and I honestly really, really love this book. So this book is a thriller, of course, because that's my favorite genre, my go-to. It was published in 2021. And it has an underwhelming amount of reviews and ratings on Goodreads. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to pick this book for the series. I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, so let's get into it. The Perfect Family Man follows a woman named Olivia. Olivia and her husband Nate live in a tight-knit neighborhood across the street from a row of beautiful lake houses. Five years ago, Olivia and Nate's son, named Jack, disappeared into thin air. There have been no leads since his initial disappearance. Unfortunately, Olivia is very familiar with trauma, as something from her past back when she was a teenager continues to haunt her to this day. In present day, Olivia is still struggling with the loss of her son Jack, and Nate is very well aware of this. At the beginning of the book, Nate leaves for another one of his very frequent business trips, and he worries about Olivia's mental state before he goes. She assures him that she will be just fine. Olivia is an artist, and she tries to distract herself with her work while Nate is away. Although she's itching to speak with him when he returns about something that she found in his coat pocket recently. On the same day that Nate leaves for his business trip, a woman moves into a house that was for sale across the street from them. She's accompanied by a little boy, which reminds Olivia of her own little boy that she once had. As the days go on while Nate is away, she notices that her new neighbor is quite the party animal and is not watching over her son like a good mother should be. Olivia knows this feeling all too well. After multiple days, Olivia loses contact with Nate. He stops responding to her texts, her calls. She doesn't know where he is. It seems as though her husband too has also disappeared without a trace. Her son's and her husband's disappearances, as well as her tragic past, are all unseemingly related but there's more to the story than what meets the eye. Okay, I hope that gave you guys a really good idea of what this book is about without giving too much away. For me personally, I overall really like this book. I definitely didn't see some of the twists and turns that it took. There were some things that I was a little disappointed that happened, but then there were some other things that I was really glad had happened and got some closure on. I flew through this book in just a few days. I liked how some of the chapters ended on cliffhangers, so it definitely made you want to keep going and keep reading. I feel like there were a lot of characters to keep track of, a lot of information and timelines to keep track of, so it was a bit of a challenge to try and predict what was going on or make sure you're keeping up with it, but sometimes I kind of like that. The only negative thing that I have to say about this book, or the primary negative thing that kind of bugged me, was that there was kind of a contradiction um, in the book. So this isn't giving anything away because this is literally on the synopsis in the back. Um, But it says here, Nate hasn't worked for the company in six months, right? So this is basically Olivia discovering that he hasn't been working for the company that he's been working for for years, for the past six months, right? She discovers this. This is all in the back here. Now I have it marked or annotated here. In the book, what it says is, so Nate hadn't worked for them in almost a year. So last I checked, almost a year is not six months. Those are two totally different timelines. I don't know how much of a difference this really makes, but it was just a little confusing. I noticed it right away because I thought that I had remembered the back said six months. So um, unless I'm missing something else, that was just kind of annoying. But other than that, I didn't notice any other like mistakes or contradictions or anything that kind of ruined the book for me. So I still really enjoyed it. So I gave this book four out of five stars 
And at the time of filming this on Goodreads, it has 4.04 stars out of five. There are only 1,500 total ratings and only 90 reviews. So given that this book is three years old, it feels like not a lot. <laughs> so that is again, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this because I don't think that this book gets enough recognition. It's definitely not like the best thriller I've ever read, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope you do too. If you have already read this book, please comment your thoughts below because I want to talk to somebody about it. <laughs> and if I have convinced you to read the book and you're going to go add it to your TBR now, also let me know and tell me what you think about it when you do get to it. Thank you for tuning in to episode one of Pages from the Pod. I really appreciate your support. Please subscribe if you want to see some more from me. Happy reading!